Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. And welcome back to the Weird Science Comics YouTube channel, where I'm going to be going through the latest issue of Nightwing. It's Nightwing number 99. Now, Tom Taylor's Nightwing book is an easy book to like. Every issue shows the reader how great Dick Grayson is, how much he is loved, and, well, that's the majority of it. At points, it feels like Taylor is more a PR agent than a writer. I'm not sure who he thinks needs convincing, because besides Dan DiDio, Dick Grayson seems to be universally loved. Still, if you are new to the character or just want a fun, quick read where the hero and his friends help each other out, always do the right thing, this run is probably for you. However, there isn't much else once you get past the fan service idol worship. Because Dick is perfect and has so much help, most threats end up feeling not quite like threats at all. Most of the problems are solved without much effort in the end. That doesn't make the book horrible. It just makes it feel like a lot of empty calories at times. But let's jump into Nightwing number 99 and see what we get here. Before we do that, though, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, enable the notifications. Let me know what you thought of Nightwing number 99. Here are the credits. It is written, of course, by Tom Taylor, art by Bruno Redondo, with a couple pages by Geraldo Borges, which makes it interesting to look at those pages and wonder if these things were added later. It's a lot of the Tony Zuko stuff there. But we also have K.A.O. Uh, Felipe on inks, I probably butchered that, and Adriana Lucas on colors, Wes Abbott on letters. And if you're not aware, there's a power vacuum in Bloodhaven. And I'm not talking about something that you'd see, like, you know, only on TV. It's a power vacuum because the mobsters, they're all going down. Blockbuster is dead. And not only is Salvatore Moroni out of the picture, but he's also singing like a canary. And if snitches get stitches... They may run out of threat as we see cops, government officials, and other criminals all going up the river. Of course, that leaves the front door wide open for a new crime boss to stake their claim and in struts Tony Zuko. And that's always going to be big in any sort of Dick Grayson book. But Tom Taylor has set up another wrinkle in this Nightwing run with Bloodhaven Mayor Melinda Zuko, who also happens to be Dick Grayson's half sister. Now, Tony goes right to her gets immediately to the point. Hey, we're going to do some bad stuff and we'll end up ruling Bloodhaven. It, it'll be easy peasy, but we have to act fast. Now, readers of this book should know Melinda isn't going to agree to that underhanded crap her father is into, and she does end up running right to Dick Grayson and lets him know the situation. Now, the situation is Tony Zuko plans to grab some of Salvador Moroni's jewels I mean, really, what does he need them for right now? He's going to get those jewels, get rich, and take over the city. Now, Tom Taylor usually doesn't get bogged down with explanations. It's kind of shade. But it's up to the reader to decide if the setup makes sense. Seriously, Zuko knowing how to get these jewels is small potatoes compared to Tony Zuko getting out of jail for, quote-unquote, good behavior. Now, luckily, Nightwing is on the case. He follows Zuko to the old fishing district and finds out about The Hold, a shady bank and organization that is never really explained, but I'm sure it would involve something like where anything can be held for a price. It reminded me a lot of the recent Underbroker from James Tynan's Batman run, except this hold has the Gorton's fishermen in charge, so it makes it so much cooler, right? Trouble starts, though, when Tony Zuko shoots the Gorton's fisherman, right in the face, and Nightwing busts in looking for a fight. Well, luckily, Tony Zuko has brought some strong arms with him in Aliki and Margot Marceau, former circus people, of course, because, you know, this is Nightwing, and you have to have that. They end up probably exchanging a couple circus stories, but they definitely exchange a bunch of roundhouse kicks, and they actually get to do it on an old suspended boat with a giant monster skeleton there, so that's a pretty cool set piece. Unfortunately, we don't get much of a fight as Tony Zuko escapes with the jewels, followed by Nightwing. Now, what happened to the Marceaus is anybody's guess, and this is something that will continuously pop up in Tom Taylor books, especially this Nightwing book, 
where you end up having something going on. But at the end, you're left wondering exactly what happened in the full scene because you're only there focusing on Dick Grayson running around, and in this case, Tony Zuko. So you end up Nightwing chases down Tony Zuko, and he's going to take him down, right? He's going to grab it, kind of. You see the Shady Hold has an organization and a squad around it, too, and they show up and demand that Zuko pay for stealing this gem. Well, Nightwing kind of steps in and says, no, no, no. And this is kind of the surface level stuff that we'll get. He has to face Bloodhaven justice, go to a Bloodhaven jail. You know, this isn't time for vigilante justice here. You have to go. So you end up with the hold. Say, okay, we're going to go with that. You know, hey, Nightwing, you're a nice guy. We'll go with that. Plus, we'll give you the evidence you'll need in court to prove that Zuko is a bad man and should go back to jail. That seems like a stretch for a hidden shadowy bank that is up to shady things to do. It doesn't seem like it's the type of thing that would get involved with opening the books to assist in a criminal case involving mobsters and crazy gems. And at the end, Dick finds out that someone stored something in the hold for him. But who knows when we'll get to that. Uh, You know, we'll eventually get to that. I'm guessing it's going to be something from his parents, but we'll have to see if we do end up getting to that. The issue, though, ends with Melinda changing her name. She wants that Zuko right out and talking with Dick as we see Heartless grabbing hearts like he thinks he's Molaram from the Temple of Doom movie. Now, I love Tony Zuko showing up in Bloodhaven. Yeah, it's happened before. But he is one of Dick's biggest villains. However, just felt like a placeholder here. He just showed up to show up and be put away, possibly to be used later. It's just to go, oh, my God, he's around and he may come back. I understand we're heading to issue number 100. A lot of people are talking that there will be a status quo change. So I understand that we can't do much next issue. But why do Tony dirty like this anyway? Why have him show up in 99 and then uh, putting him away? Also, I thought we would get a little more heartless after the Nightwing annual last month, but he's just relegated to the background once again. And seriously, this guy has been around for so long, hanging out, grabbing hearts, talking crap, maybe even some other things you don't see, like taking pottery classes and working on a stand up routine. I'm not sure, but seriously, we have to get the heartless in out i mean is crapper get off the pot there heartless but bruno redundo's art's great and a couple pages that are all the birds just filled in were good as well and overall this was a good issue but your score may go down if you were hoping to get more from tony zuko we'll probably get more later but again it's anyone's guess how long that might take so i'm gonna give this a solid eight out of ten And, yeah, I recommend this. It's fun. You end up having some really, really good art. I love Bruno Redondo. And having Tony Zuko in the book, that is big. It's just a little disappointing. We didn't get more out of that. But we're heading off to issue number 100, so that'll be pretty cool. But, again, let me know what you thought of the issue in the comments below. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and enable those notifications. But, I will be off now. I hope everybody enjoyed this, and I'll talk to you all later. Go read comics. You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution.